Hey everyone, I'm Pamela and I'll be demonstrating today how we can use prompt-driven development to fix bugs in a chat application. We'll be using GitHub Copilot agent mode plus special features like custom chat modes and MCP servers. Let's dive into the app code to see what we're dealing with. Here's our full stack chat application running. This is a application that is using retrieval augmented generation, a technique that we can use with large language models in order to answer questions based off a knowledge base. Uh, so this one is answering questions for a fictional company. It's like an HR chatbot where you can, you know, learn about how the company works. So you see, we send off a question, we get back a response and it has citations. Now, how does this actually look in code? So here I've got it open in VS Code with the local servers running, both the front end and the back end. And there's a lot of folders here with a lot of code. So, you know, if we were brand new to the project, uh, we would obviously want to read some documentation. But if there wasn't any, what we could do is actually ask GitHub Copilot to help us out. So like, okay, please describe the high level architecture of this chat app. Uh, just some um, helpful bullet points, right? I don't want to read a whole essay. I uh, just want to get an idea for the rough layout and maybe some pointers around the code. So here I'm in ask mode, which is a mode where we're just asking questions. We don't actually want it to do anything. We just want to ask questions, right? Uh, it's just acting like a, you know, little helpful assistant that's going to use both what's in its knowledge and also use the code base to try and answer these questions. And I'm using the GPT-5 model here in order to answer the question. Uh, so here's the overall pattern. It says it's a RAG application uh, using Azure OpenAI and Azure AI Search. Uh, then for the front end, it's React plus TypeScript. And the front end calls the back end over REST endpoints. Then we've got the back end, which is a Python app using the Quirt framework with several RAG approaches that we use and different integrations at the URI search. It also describes the data ingestion, the infrastructure for deployment, the various developer settings, the testing, and local experience, and the CI CD. So this is a really nice overview of the application. It gives me an idea for how it's built and how I might make improvements to it. Now let's actually fix something with this application. Maybe we get a report from a user that there are accessibility issues, that they're having some hard time using it with a screen reader application. What I'm gonna do is use an extension in order to look for accessibility issues. I'll scan the page. It immediately says there are three issues. Okay, so we definitely have something to fix here. I'm taking a screenshot of those errors and then going over to GitHub Copilot. And what I've done here is actually selected the agent mode. The agent mode is a mode that can edit things, make new files, um, use tools, fetch web pages, iterate, reflect, plan, just keep working till, till it gets the task done. And I've chained the model to Claude Sonnet 4 because that works usually pretty well in agent mode. So now I can go and upload the screenshot we just took and then say, you know, fix the accessibility issues from the screenshot, okay? Now agent mode is working on the task. We can see clearly that it's understood the image. It read the text in the image. Uh, this is a multimodal model. It can read images. And now it's going to go through and figure out what it needs to change in order to fix those issues. At the beginning, it does a lot of reading of files in order to understand what the current state of the code base is before it actually goes and makes changes. So now it has an idea of what to fix and it starts making changes. And when it makes changes, we'll see them pop up in the editor and presented as a diff so we can see what it looked like before and what it looks like after so that we, you know, we are comfortable with the changes. So in this case, we can see that it's added this main element in order to wrap another component. And, you know, hopefully that fixes one of the issues. And then it built the front end to make sure that it worked. All right, so it says that it has um, fixed the issues. And so we can say keep and then go back over to the web page, reload the web page, and pop back open that accessibility tool and do a full page scan. 
And look at that, we have zero issues identified. So agent mode fixed that issue, actually fixed multiple issues, which is really, really cool. Now let's see how we can tackle more complex issues using custom chat modes. So before we were using the agent mode and the ask mode, those are both built-in modes in VS Code. But what you can see is that I have a custom mode called Fixer. This comes from my GitHub chat modes folder from fixer.chatmode.md. And this describes the custom chat mode. We've got a description, a preferred model, the allowed tools, and the instructions. So for the tools, we can click on configure tools and see all of our options, right? I can select from all of the built-in tools, from extensions, from MCP servers. So I've selected 56 tools, which I think are the ones that are most useful for fixing issues in this app. Then I've got the instructions. So it says, okay, you're gonna you know, get all the information about the issue. You're gonna uh, use GitHub if it's a GitHub issue. Uh, you're gonna make just the minimal change needed. And then you're gonna verify the fix using the run test tool. Now, if it does need to set up the local server, it can run a task to do that. And the agent can even check the output from the task to make sure there's no errors. So let's try it out. Uh, we've got a error uh, that's filed here or an issue filed here that says, okay, the current error message that comes from the app has a link that's outdated. And so let's update that error message to, uh, to a different message, right? That doesn't have that outdated link. This has some, been something I've been meaning to fix for a while now, actually. So I'm gonna see how it does when I ask it to fix the issue. So first thing it does is use the GitHub MCP server to get the issue details. So we can see the title, description. It could even fetch comments if there were any comments, but there weren't for that one. Now it's searching the code base to see what is responsible for the error message that it needs to update and anything that's related to it that it might need to update as well, like in the test files. Uh, so it's already found the file that's responsible for the error message and has the outdated link. And now it's looking for other files that are related. So it actually found a bunch of, these are all test related files that it's looking at in order to understand what needs to be updated on the testing front. It started making the changes to the files. So starting with the actual backend code, it has changed the old message to the suggested new message here. And it started to update the test code as well based off of that new message. So it's going through, it's making lots of fixes. Uh, these are a bunch of short little fixes. These are the kind of fixes that are, are kind of annoying to make as a developer. And it's nice to have the agent making these changes instead. Now it's checking to see if there's anything that it missed and if any of the remaining files need updating. It found a couple more files that it's going to update. Now it's going to run the tests actually using the VS Code test runner. So here you can see that the tests are running and that they are uh, almost halfway through now. Oh, and now all the way through all the tests run, all the tests pass and it's done. So it's made a bunch of changes. It's verified all the tests pass. It's given me a summary of everything it's done. This is looking really good. So the next step is we're gonna keep all these changes because I agreed with them and they look nice and all the tests pass, so that's that's awesome. And I'm going to uh, make a commit, right? So um, first thing we need is a branch. So actually, let me say, ask it. Um, you make a branch and commit these changes keys. Here we see a a uh, long command line message, um, very thorough. It's going to make a new branch. It's going to add all the files it changed and only those files. And then it makes a commit and it has an auto-generated message here uh, based off of the changes it made. So I'll press continue to allow it to make that, make that command in the terminal. And there we go, it committed it. And the next step is that I can make a PR and it's even offered to make the PR so I say, sure, make a PR. Let's see what happens. Now it's pushing this branch to a branch on the remote and it's using the GitHub CLI in order to make the PR. Now that command wasn't quite right, so it suggested a new command to use instead in order to make the PR. 
And here we go. It said it's made the PR. I can go and check it out. And I could assign reviewer. And of course, I could even assign Copilot as a reviewer. Uh, but I'll also ask a colleague to look at it as well. So there you go. The issue is fixed. All the tests are passed. That was all possible thanks to custom chat mode and special tools. That's all for this video. Hopefully this gives you an idea of how you can work better with GitHub Copilot to fix the issues in your applications. Check the description of this video for all the resources and make sure to watch the other videos in the series for more tips on prompt driven development. If you do have any feedback or questions, pop them in the chat below. I'll be happy to reply. See you next time.